Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Adventures of Foxfoil. Today, we are starting off in the desert village that we did last time, and I really like how it turned out. And I think the changes that we made kept it looking a little bit different from the regular desert village without changing it so drastically that it doesn't look like a desert village at all. In the last episode, I received a comment suggesting that we should do more work over in this area, and I really like that idea, and I've been busy working on a plan for a major project that we can do here and we should have that ready to go for the next episode which should be coming out in a couple of days but for today what i want to work on is upgrading our farms using a block that came out in the 1.21 update and the block that we are going to be focusing on today is the crafter now i'm no redstone expert but i have a basic understanding of how the crafter is supposed to work so if you have a bunch of items coming into the crafter like iron ingots say from an iron farm and those items form a recipe for a block like a block of iron then when the crafter is powered it will automatically create the block of iron so this will be a really useful upgrade to our farms and will save me a lot of time so let me see which farms can we work on to upgrade using the crafter i think the bamboo farm could be upgraded using the crafter and looking at the amount of chests that i have here we would probably save some space doing that. Let's see, with the mob farm, we can't really do anything for the gunpowder or the rotten flesh. We could definitely use it though for the bone. Obviously, the iron farm will be one that we upgrade as well. Ah, uh, the endermen have been leaving a mess in here. And I think this gold farm also needs to be upgraded too. All right, so we are going to upgrade the iron farm, the gold farm, the mob farm, and the bamboo farm. To do the upgrades, we are going to need some redstone, a whole bunch of crafters, hoppers, repeaters, and comparators. Now that we have everything gathered up, we can start upgrading our farms, starting with the iron farm. There are two reasons why we are going to be starting our upgrades with the iron farm. The first reason is that this farm should be relatively easy to upgrade because there's just a single output and plenty of room to work with. The second reason why we are going to be starting with this farm is because it's in the spawn chunks. So we can leave it running while I'm doing the rest of the upgrades, and it'll give us an idea of how effective this upgrade is going to be. So you know how I said this farm would be relatively easy? I completely forgot that iron farms also produce poppies, which means we are going to need to install an item sorter before we can do any auto craft. This just got a little bit more complicated. So the first thing that we are going to do is move the output down to the ground floor. That way we can do a lot of the work with it down there. Now that we have the hoppers running along here, we can get the item sorter all installed, which it now is. But one thing that I am worried about is that the redstone clock, which is on these blocks here, may lock the hoppers. So let's turn the farm on and see what happens. We just need to place a redstone torch right here. So as you can hear, there is an iron golem up at the top, not having a great time, but we should start to see if everything is working. The iron ingots come into this chest right here. So let's just see, should be any time. Yes, all right. So we don't have to worry about the hoppers getting locked. This is perfect. So for this farm, what we are going to do instead of having these chests here is that we are going to remove the chest and then have the hopper for the poppies just feed into a composter and then the hopper right here for the iron going into the crafter. So we now have something like this. And right here we have this chest so that if there is any overflow with the iron ingots, they will be in this chest here and they won't back up the system over here. Will that be necessary? I don't know but it's better to be safe than sorry. So I moved it down one block just to be able to move the crafter over a little bit more. And then what we are going to do is place a comparator right here. We are going to then add a block right here. And then over on this side, we are going to get a repeater. I should have them right here. There we go. And we're going to place the repeater here going into a block right there. And then some redstone dust right here. Then over on this side, we are going to add another comparator into this spot here. We are going to get a crafter and place it right there. And then in this crafter, we are going to select all of these spots to disable them. What does all of this do? Well, as best as I understand it, what this comparator right here is doing is it's checking to see if there are any items in the crafter. This comparator right here makes sure that for the items that are coming in here, nothing gets crafted until all of the spots are filled. And that's why all of these spots are selected on this one. Then once all of the spots are filled up in this crafter, it has a signal strength that is strong enough to send a signal into this block, which powers the repeater, which then triggers the crafter to craft the item that is there. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So now what we are going to do is come over here and place a chest right there. We are going, going to put a hopper right here in front of the crafter, which will hopefully spit the items out into it. And now to test it out, we are going to put nine iron ingots into here, and we should see an iron block end up in the chest. Just like that. So we're now going to leave the iron farm to run while we go around and upgrade the other farms. And if you want to guess how many iron blocks we are going to be able to get by the end of the episode, I will add the time at the bottom of the screen, which you should now see. 
and that will tell you how many hours I spent going around and upgrading the other farm. And if you want to leave a comment down below with a guess of how many iron blocks we are going to be able to collect in that amount of time, if you are correct, I will include your comment in the next video. But now it's time to collect up our items and move on to the next farm. The next farm that we are going to be working on is the gold farm. Now the gold farm shouldn't be too bad, but there is a little bit of a difference from the iron farm because not only are we going to have the gold ingots, we are also going to have gold nuggets that we have to deal with. Plus this base is a little cramped. I think what I'm going to do is start by crafting up all of the gold items that we have into gold blocks. And then that way we can start to move the chest around without leaving a bunch of stuff on the ground. And I'm so glad after today, I won't have to do this anymore. We are also going to need to remove all of the chests and hoppers to make room for the new system. I think what I want to do is expand this area to have a little bit more space to work with. I need to get some more glass. So hopefully I will have enough glass now to be able to expand this by two blocks in all directions. And it looks like I did with plenty to spare. So if we take a look at the item filter, you can see that we have gold nuggets here and here. We have gold ingots here and here gold nuggets here and here and gold ingots here and here so let's see if we can create an auto crafting system that will have both of these feed into it both of these feed into one both of these feed into one and so on and so forth so i keep building this and rebuilding it trying to get it in a correct position so that way we are not blocking the other inputs and i don't know if i'm going to be able to do this there's a reason i stick to building so the first system for the gold nuggets is completed Let's get the others built to see if this is a good position for it or not. So now we have all of the systems in place for all of the golden nuggets. And we can do that by turning these gold ingots into nuggets and sticking them in these chests. And if they come out at the bottom with eight, we should be all good to go. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For the test on number two, we've got seven eight and nine that one is working for system number three we are having a problem maybe did i not oh i forgot to select these all right we'll get those and we should be able to get the ingots now or not let's take those out here we'll run the process again and see what happens there we go that's much better so for system number four i went to put the nuggets in to test it out the chest was all filled up all of these hoppers were filled up with swords and rotten flesh so i've been going through clearing them out and i'm not quite sure what happened but the system that is supposed to be dispensing the swords and rotten flesh into the lava over here does not seem to be working so I'm going to have to try to fix that. So let's put the swords in here and see. This should start to activate. All right. Not sure why that got backed up, but now it's fixed. And it looks like system number four is working perfectly. One reason I like to plan things out is so that I don't have to do things like this, which is undoing the work that I just did to extend the platform because we need to lower this platform down by a couple of blocks. Speaking of planning, we need to plan out how we are going to have the final system finish up. And what I want to do is have the gold blocks end up in these three chests here, which means that we need to figure out the best way to get all of the items from up here, the gold ingots from the crafters here, as well as from the gold farm and all wrap around and end up in this spot. I think this is going to be a bit of a challenge. And that was definitely a bit of a head scratcher, but we now have all of the crafters connected up to the outputs. We just need to get the system set up so that they can start automatically crafting up the gold blocks and we'll be finished. And we now have everything set up. So let's give this a test and see what will happen if we get the farm running. I let the farm run for about 15 minutes. And what are these guys doing down here? Oh, this is not good. You all need to leave. Leave, leave, be gone. All right, let's check out what we have as far as the gold blocks go. So nothing half good here or here. Oh, there we go. Got two, great. Let's make sure, okay. Oh, that's, well, there we go. That's why that wasn't working. So it was only 15 minutes. I wasn't expecting a lot there, but it does look like the system is all set up and ready to go. So that's two down, two to go. Next up. We have the bones with the mob farm. And for these, we are going to be doing something a little bit different than what we've done so far. Because bones are going to require two different systems before they can be crafted up into bone blocks. First, we have to convert all of the bones into bone meal, and then we can convert the bone meal into bone block. But I think before I can get started adding in the systems, I first need to get all of these bones 
converted into bone blocks so that we can move them out of the way and there we go we've got the last of the bones converted into bone blocks and you can see in these chests we've got so many bone blocks I don't think I'm going to need any more, at least until I find a massive build that I'm going to use them for. So the first step in the process is to create the system that is going to convert the bones into bone meal. And for that, we are going to do it on this little platform that I built here. We are going to place the crafter right there, and then we can get the system set up. And we now have the input going into the crafter. We are going to deselect these spots right here. So only the bones will go into here. And once the bones go into here, they can be crafted into bone meal. Unlike the other system that we've been doing, we are going to need a redstone clock to be able to get the crafter to be constantly going whenever the bones pop in. So that way they don't start to build up. And I could do something as simple as placing these observers right here, which if I could do it in the correct way, would just be like that. And that would constantly be ticking away. And anytime bones came into here, it'd be converted into bone meal. But I don't want this to be running all the time. So what I'm going to do is place a comparator right here. I'm going to put a block there. And then I'm going to place a repeater right here. We're going to put some redstone dust along this spot right there. And then we're going to place a sticky piston right about here and then we're going to place some blocks right there finally we are going to put some redstone dust to go along right here to power the sticky piston and then we are going to place this observer right there in the correct spot so that's facing this one let's see if we can do it there we go so now whenever this comparator detects an item in the hopper it'll send a signal all the way through powering the sticky piston pressing the observer up over here sending the signal into the crafter. But there is one more thing that we need to do to make sure that this system runs smoothly. And that is a pulse extender, which we can create by putting some comparators like this and then some redstone dust here. And what that'll do is that when the signal comes through, it'll keep the redstone clock going long enough to make sure that all of the items get cleared out of the craft. And that is the main difference for this one. Now we just need to get the other system, which we are very familiar with built up and we'll be all done and i now have that system built and i think all i've really done today is make my farms look like a mess of hoppers because you can see here this is what we've got but i think it should be working and we can test it out with some bone blocks let's see let's grab this stack right here and if we place it in one of these hoppers up here you can see it start to come through the system hopefully maybe no where are they going should be going into here why are we not having them come through maybe they are coming through I haven't no so it turns out instead of converting the bone blocks into bone meal it just sent the bone blocks all the way through the system so i went back to my storage room and got some bones let's try it out with the actual thing to see what will happen let's hope that this works out better and it doesn't well they're going through are they ending up over here? No, we're just getting... Oh, I see. This is the problem. This right here. Ah, uh, okay. Take number two. Going to put the bones in here. And there we are. There's the bone meal coming out. Oh, I can't believe I did that. And we should see, yep, bone block here. Not in this side. I wonder why it only goes in the one. All right, well, at least the system's working. That's a good thing. And we are down to our final farm that we are going to be upgrading, the bamboo farm. And now that you have seen all about the systems that we are installing, I think we are going to do this one as a time-lapse. So let's get started. And the bamboo farm has been upgraded with the crafters and over here we've got the chest where the bamboo logs will end up and then these chests over here are just in case any bamboo gets to the end it'll be converted to sticks so that i don't have to craft up the sticks anymore but i think now what i'm going to do is turn on the bamboo farm and just see how everything is going to work so any second here we should start to see some bamboo come through and end up in the hoppers hopefully 
uh he's still waiting and here it comes so we got it going along there and you can see it got, goes into the hoppers and should be crafted up make sure that it's all connected up to the hopper and into the crafter so yeah we've got the bamboo getting crafted up nice and quickly here let's see that's not one that one doesn't have any and this one is not getting crafted up what's going on back here of course i forgot to do this that makes total sense so i got that fixed up and you can see in one of these chests there should be there we are there are the blocks of bamboo this crafter update is going to be really good for all of the farms that i've got but i think what i'm going to do is leave the bamboo farm running for about an hour or so and let's see how many logs that we can collect in that amount of time so i ended up letting the bamboo farm run for about two and a half hours and take a look we ended up getting a lot of blocks for bamboo and we're going to be able to turn that into wood to put into our smelter over here but not only do we have all of those blocks of bamboo in there but i took all of the bamboo that had been in the chest down there to this monstrosity of a device to go ahead and get it converted over as well and you can see here we've got a lot of blocks of bamboo already getting built up and there's still more to do from these chests, which will hopefully be done soon because i don't want to leave this here in the middle of the street but i think that is where we are going to leave it for today we did a lot of technical work in this episode and we are going to make up for it by doing a massive building project in the next episode and that video will be coming out in just a couple of days and i am super excited to be able to show you the build that i have been working on in the next episode i will also be revealing how many iron blocks my iron farm produced during this episode so definitely leave your guess in the comments down below and if you are correct i will include your comment in the next video but until the next episode if you enjoyed today's video please leave a like if you want to see more please subscribe and until next time see you later